This video introduces how we combine and subset SAS datasets. We've seen the set statement before. We used it when we were working with the import wizard, bringing in an Excel spreadsheet, and we wanted to create a copy of our SAS dataset into a new SAS dataset. We've also looked at the set statement in relation to working with permanent SAS datasets. So the set statement reads a SAS dataset, and it replaces the in-file and input statements used when reading in raw data. So here we have an example where we are creating a SAS dataset called new, and we're copying in another SAS dataset called old, and we're keeping a certain list of variables. So the keep statement is optional. We don't need that. And so basically what we're doing here is we are creating a new data set called new that has all the variables in the var list and has the same observations as the SAS data set old. Is new a permanent SAS data set or a temporary SAS data set? It's a temporary SAS data set because we don't have a lib name statement and we don't have a two-level name in our data statement. The set statement can also be used to concatenate or stack SAS data sets. So we can actually stack two data sets together and create a new SAS data set. For example, if we had a data set that were males and a data set that were females, we could create a new SAS data set that combined males and females by using the set statement. So here's a general example of our code where we start data new data set and we're stacking data set 1 followed by data set n. The observation order is determined by the original order. So data set 1 is going to be the first set of observations in our new data set and data set n is going to follow the observations that were in data set 1. Also, if one data set has a variable that's not on the other, observations from the other data set will be missing for that variable. So let's say that we were concatenating two data sets, a male data set and a female data set. And on our female data set, we had a variable called LMP, standing for last menstrual period. Now, that variable might be on the female data set, and when we concatenated it with the male data set, that variable would then be on the combined data set, but for all of the male observations, that variable LMP would be missing. So when we combine and make a new data set, all the variables are on the new data set, but that does not necessarily mean that all of the variables will have complete data. It depends on whether there was data in the original data set for that particular variable. Another useful statement when we're combining or subsetting SAS data sets is the output statement. The output statement tells SAS to output the current observation to the SAS data set. And the basic syntax is just output and then the data set name. Note that there is an implied output statement at the end of the data step. If SAS sees an output statement in the data step, then SAS will only output when you tell it to. Otherwise, if there's no output statement in the data step, then SAS just outputs the observation when it comes to the end of the data step. So here we have an example of where we want to make multiple data sets in one data step. So notice here in our data statement, we are listing out four different temporary data sets that we want to create within this one data step. And we're calling the four data sets Clinic A, Clinic B, Clinic C, and Clinic D. And we're bringing in the permanent SAS data set SE score. And then our statements say that if Clinic equals A, then output Clinic A. So if the observation that we are processing is from clinic A, 
then that particular observation will be outputted to the new SAS temporary data set called Clinic A. If a particular observation is from Clinic B, then that particular observation will be outputted to Clinic B, and so forth. So here we are creating four different temporary SAS data sets, and on each of those data sets, the only variables that will be on them are the three variables PTID, for patient ID, clinic, and RAND date, which stands for randomization date. So again, if SAS sees an output statement in the data step, then SAS will only output when you tell it to. And here is the log from this program. So we see here there were 100 observations read from the data set mylib.ses score. So there were 100 observations read from this permanent SAS data set. And then for clinic A, 18 observations were outputted and there were just three variables. So 18 of the observations from the permanent SAS data set SES score were from Clinic A, and so they were outputted to the Clinic A temporary data set. And 29 observations were from Clinic B, so they were outputted to the Clinic B data set, and so forth. So in this example, we have used four output statements to create four temporary SAS data sets. Each data set has just three variables, PTID, clinic, and RAND date. Let's say we were interested in matching observations from one data set with observations from another data set. So let's say we had a data set of baseline information on a group of patients, and we wanted to merge that data set with follow-up data on the same group of patients. To merge two data sets, we need to use the merge statement. And the way the merge statement works is that it matches observations from one data set with observations from another. And in order to do that, it has to have a by statement, and the by statement must be the same name and type on both data sets you want to merge. So if you want to merge based on patient ID, then patient ID needs to be either a numeric or character variable, and it's got to be the same on both of the data sets that you want to merge. So if patient ID is numeric on data set 1, then patient ID needs to be numeric on data set 2 in order to merge the two data sets. Otherwise, you'll get an error. So what you're going to need to do first when you want to merge two data sets is you're going to need to sort each of the data sets by that common variable, for example, patient ID. If two data sets are merged with common variable names besides the by variable, variables from the second data set will overwrite the same name variables from the first data set. So let's say you have a variable on your first data set, such as BMI and then you have the same variable BMI on the second data set and you're merging by patient ID, BMI from the second data set is going to overwrite the BMI on the first data set. And we'll look at examples of that when I do the SAS demonstration video. So here is the typical code you will see when you want to create a merge data set. First of all, we're sorting two different SAS data sets. We're sorting at baselines data set and a data set called follow-up. And for each of those data sets, we're sorting it by ID. Then we're creating a new data set, data all, and we use the merge statement. So we're merging baseline and follow-up by ID. It's very, very important that you include the by statement. If you leave out the by statement, the program will run, but the results will not look as you would expect them to look. Now what if I only want observations that are in the second data set? So in this example, I'm creating a new data set called deaths, and I'm merging my baseline data set with my follow-up data set, and I'm only interested in keeping the patients that were in the follow-up data set. As it happens, these patients were patients that died. And so we only want to keep those patients who are in the follow-up data set in our new data set that we're calling deaths. 
How do we do that? The way we're going to do that is by using a contributor variable that's called n equals. And what it does it is it gives us control over which observations are added to the merged data set. Basically, n1 is going to equal 1 if that data set, the baseline data set, has made a contribution to the current observation. And what I mean by a contribution is it has a non-missing value for the by variable. So if a patient ID was on the baseline data set, then n1 would equal 1. If a patient ID was in the follow-up data set, then n2 would equal 1. And the variable names n1 and n2 are just variable names that are used in the data step. They are not actually outputted to the new data set. So here what we're saying is if you came from the baseline data set, n1 equals 1. If you came from the follow-up data set, then n2 equals 1. And we're only interested in those observations that came from the follow-up data set. So we're making the statement if n2, which is the same as saying if n2 equals 1. So we're only keeping observations that appeared in the follow-up data set. And those observations would have been merged with the baseline information. And so what we've created is a data set that only have patients that died. So let's look at this in terms of logical statements. If we are only interested in subjects that appeared in the first data set, we would write the statement if n1, which is the same as saying if n1 equals 1. If we are only interested in keeping observations that appeared from the second data set, then we would write the statement if n2. If we were interested in only keeping subjects that were in both of the data sets, then we would write the statement if n1 and n2. Another way of visualizing these logical variables is with this Venn diagram. So here we have our two data sets, data set 1 and data set 2. If a particular observation had data from both of those two data sets, then both n1 would equal 1 and n2 would equal 1. And so going back to our example of merging together baseline data with follow-up data on patients and we, where we were creating a new data set death, then a patient who was in both the baseline data set and in the follow-up data set would appear in the intersection of these two data sets. If the patient was just on the follow-up data set but not on the baseline data set, then it would be this area that doesn't overlap between the two data sets, data set 1 and data set 2. And similarly, if the patient was only on the baseline data set and not in the follow-up data set, then the contributor variables would take on the values n1 equals 1 and n2 equals 0. This concept is a little bit complicated, and I think it will be more clear when we look at examples in the SAS demonstration video of how we merge SAS data sets. The last thing I wanted to mention in this video was an automatic variable called underscore n underscore. And this is a helpful variable that can be used, and it's only available in the data step. This variable is not outputted onto your data set. It's an internal SAS counter which contains the current iteration number of the data step. So when the program starts, the variable underscore n underscore has a value of 1. And each time we go through the data step, each time SAS goes through the data step and processes a subsequent observation, then this counter gets bumped up by 1. And you can actually use this underscore n underscore as a variable in the data step. So you could write an if-then statement. For example, if underscore n underscore equals 1, then take some kind of action. Here is an example of how we use this automatic SAS variable in a data step. 
we're creating a data set called March 10 and we're just interested in selecting the first 10 observations that appeared in the SAS temporary data set March. So we're using the underscore n underscore to select out just those first 10 observations. And we see here in our SAS log that there were 635 observations read from the data set work.march. This was the data set I used in the SAS management video. And that our new data set, March 10, has just 10 observations and 13 variables. And the 10 observations that were selected were the first 10 observations that SAS processed in the data step. Now view the SAS demonstration video combined data sets. And lastly view the SAS demonstration video SPSS to SAS.